Okay, <laughs> so we're discussing bone, compact bone and spongy bone. So we're gonna start with this. So this is the femur. This is a real bone from an actual human. And you can see that we've kind of have a transverse or cross-sectional cut here to show you outside and inside, uh, which is gonna help us with this model. So the outer part is what we call the compact bone or the cortex. It's thick, it's strong, it gives bone its strength. That's this part, okay? Inside is what we call the spongy bone. Now, I'm gonna bring this close to the camera and then maybe you can see little bits of spongy bone in mm -hmm. there, okay? And you can see it here, this is spongy bone here. We take the cortex off, you get the spongy. That refers to this part of the model. What this model is, is when you cut the bone in a cross-sectional cut and you then cut it like a pizza, this is one wedge out of this section. So this piece here is this. The spongy part is this. So the center of the bone is here, and this is the compact bone going all around the outside, and then this is the very outside of the bone here. Okay, that's where this model comes from. This model, the osteon, this is one of these. So there's many of these within this. Okay, so we'll come back to, to that in a moment. All right, so that's our three models. We have actual bone, we have the compact bone, and we have the osteon. All right, and one, this is one osteon. There are many osteons within the compact bone. So let's start with this, all right? So this is like the unit of compact bone, the osteon, meaning many of these units would be used to create this. The unit of the osteon is the lamellae, okay? These rings of bone tissue are lamellae. A lamellae is a sheet of bone, okay? A sheet of bone that can then be used to make rings, can be cut into small pieces to put between the rings, can be used to put around the outside, we'll see in a moment. So if you look at this osteon, it's a typical osteon. Every osteon has a central canal. Okay, it's a channel that runs through the lamella. The purpose of the central canal is to bring needed materials to the cells of the lamella. Okay? This is the central canal, and every central canal has a blue vein, a red artery. This one happens to have two white nerves, and in this case, greenish color is a lymphatic vessel. We refer to this as the neurovascular bundle because it has nerves and vascular structures, and it runs through this channel called the central canal. Now let's take this to this. If you look at this side, these are central canals. These are running through the center of different osteons. All right? They only show the artery, but there would be an artery, a vein, nerve, and lymphatic vessel in each and every central canal. Okay? The central canal is the supply chain right, to the osteon. But the central canal gets its supplies from these vessels that run in the perforating canals. So this direction, perforating canals. This direction, central canals. And each central canal is interconnected by perforating canals. On this side, you see the empty channels, perforating and central. Perforating vessels get their supplies from vessels that are outside the bone. So from your heart, blood vessels run to the outside periosteal vessels, and then branches of the periosteal vessels penetrate the bone through the perforating, bringing supplies and blood to the central canal. 
the central canal distributes the nutrients to the living cells of the bone, as we'll see. So in this particular osteon, we have one, two, three, four, five rings. Concentric rings surrounding the central canal. Each ring is called a concentric lamella. It is ground substance, which is the calcium salts, hydroxyapatite. It is living cells, osteocytes, and collagen fibers. Three things make up the lamella. The three things that make up connective tissue. Cells, proteins, and ground substance. These are in concentric circles and they are built around the central canal. Now, on this particular outer uh, concentric lamellae, you can see the cells. These red and blue things represent the osteocytes. These are the living cells of the bone. Okay, they live in little areas that are dug out, little indentations, meaning the lamellae is a hard salt. It's like cement. So we have to dig out little areas within the cement for the cell to live. The lacunae is the little area that the osteocyte lives in. So these are osteocytes in lacunae. These are empty lacunae. Right? You say the same thing up here. You have osteocytes in lacunae and then you have empty lacunae. These are living cells. They require nutrients from the blood. How do the nutrients from the blood get to the cells? If the cell's living here and the blood is here, how is the stuff that's here going to get to here? The little red lines. These are also little microscopic channels, meaning they're channels drilled into the calcium salt. Channels called canaliculi that allow nutrients from here to travel through the microscopic channels to each and every cell. And each and every cell can communicate with its neighbor. And you see all these red lines. These are all canaliculi, microscopic channels that connect each of the osteocytes with one another, connect the osteocytes of one lamellae with the next, with the next, with the next, with the next, with the, next, with the central canal. So, osteon, central canal with its components, concentric lamellae, lacunae, osteocytes, canalicula. That's what we have here. That's a typical osteon. Now take this, superimpose it here, osteon with lamellae. Osteon with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See, I can count. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> lamellae, concentric lamellae. All right, this one has two, four, six, eight. They're in twos here. But many osteons packed together. Now this is a circle. So if you put a bunch of circles together, and we're gonna get a close up, and you look between the circles, you're gonna see there's little gaps between the circles, between the osteons. Those gaps are filled with lamellae, but a different type of lamellae. These are small, little, thin sheets of lamellae filling the gaps between the osteons. They're called interstitial lamellae. So you have concentric, and in between the osteons, interstitial lamellae. And then finally, wrapping around the entire circumference of the bone, these sheets here. They're lamellae, but they're running all the way around the entire circumference, they're called circumferential lamella. Circumferential. Now, if you do a close up, see all these little lines that are etched into the surface of the lamella? Parallel lines. Those represent the protein fibers, the collagen. Because remember, you need to have cells, little brown dots. You need to have ground substance, the calcium salt, 
and you need to have protein fibers for it to be a connective tissue, and all three are represented. Finally, the entire outside of the bone is covered in a denser, regular connective tissue called periosteum. The periosteum is attached to the bone. You can see these little white protein fibers. These are called perforating or Sharpies fibers. They are proteins from the periosteum cemented into the circumferential lamellae so that you cannot peel the periosteum off. The function of the periosteum, one, protect bone. Two, it contains cells that help to build bone or repair bone if bone becomes injured or fractured. And it is the connecting surface for tendons and ligaments. Because remember, ligaments hold bone together. They need to connect somewhere. They connect to the periosteum. Muscles attach to bone, they need to connect somewhere to the periosteum. So the tendon of the muscle, protein fibers from the tendon interweave with protein fibers of the periosteum. Protein fibers of a ligament interweave with protein fibers of the periosteum and anchor themselves to this. In the center of the bone, we don't have thick compact bone, we have little delicate pieces of bone. Each one of these is known as a trabeculum. We have many trabeculae interlocking to form what's known as the spongy bone. Spongy bone. There's spaces between the trabeculae. That's known as the marrow cavity. Marrow cavity. In the marrow cavity, you're gonna either have yellow marrow or red marrow. Red marrow is where blood cells are being made. Yellow marrow is stored fat. Rule of thumb, long bones of arms and legs filled with yellow marrow. So in a real bone, there would be fat in there. Bones of the axial skeleton, red marrow, continue to make red blood cells. So you can see trabeculae interwoven to make spongy bone, space, marrow cavity, and you see that it's all covered in a gray covering. Remember the gray covering here, periosteum? The gray covering here is called endosteum, endosteum. Similar idea for repair and growth of bone, not as robust as the periosteum, but thin covering over, a connective tissue covering over the spongy bone. Okay. Good. I think we got it all. <laughs>